Good morning. Hello, everyone. Joining in from across the world. <clears throat> say hello. Say hello when you're here. I'm going to take a sip. Mm. I'm so excited to be here this morning. We are doing <laughs> part three of the Masterclass series that is called Candid Clarity. And this is all about creating your story. And I'm really excited for this part because I think so many people overlook this as a powerful process and as a process of personal responsibility. So I'm excited to share some of my practices. I'm excited to share what your story can do for you and how we can recreate what we desire and create something new in this season and moving forward into 2021. So let me know when you're here. Yay, I see Christine is here. Good morning. I'm so excited. So let me introduce myself if anybody's watching this replay or maybe they're seeing this on a different platform and you're not exactly sure who I am. My name is Cami Kennedy and I am a mindset and life coach to perfectionists and high achievers. Basically what that means is, is I work with people who are really hard on themselves, who seek external validation, who want to do all the things and achieve all the things. And actually you're very successful at achieving things, but it's more so being fulfilled, feeling good on the inside. Because what I found in being a high achiever and a recovering perfectionist is I was chasing all of these external things for so many years having a, a great body whenever I was in the fitness industry, you know, making a certain amount of money, having the, the title in the job so that I could feel good about myself from something that was validating me externally. And what happened, beautiful gifts happened to me that allowed me to step into the life coaching space. But these are the two things that happened. And you may not view these as gifts. One of them was I got fired from a job because I was, it was time for me to leave and it was time for me to step into something else, but that decision was made for me and it wrecked my ego. I mean, it really hit me hard because I was fired for the way I was acting, the way I was showing up. I was very, um, I was very confident in my sales abilities and I was very driven. And that meant in the workspace, I was kind of a jerk. Right? I, I just wasn't showing up as my best version of myself. But that was a blessing because that happened in 2015 and that allowed me to start looking at the ways that I was seeking to be the best and to be right. And that's what kept showing up for me is I wanted to be the best and I wanted to be right and I wanted to be recognized. And I was saying they weren't recognizing me for my value whenever that, that really wasn't the case, right? We don't need to have somebody always recognizing us for what we're doing. Yes, you can get really clear on what you desire in a workplace, but also we have to have the ability to self-validate. And that is what I'm going to teach you today about creating your own story, about who you are, about how you show up in this world, and being able to step into that fully with clarity, with confidence, and with certainty. So, oh, the other thing that happened, I said there was two things. The other thing that happened is I was a fitness model and I was attempting to uh, do a fitness competition. And really my motivation behind a fitness competition was to go up on the stage, win first place and have everybody tell me how great I looked so that I could finally feel worthy on the inside and acceptable to myself. And long story short, I never competed. I, I attempted to prep maybe four times and it was very hard for me, it was very challenging. And all the whole entire time, I kept thinking, you're fat, you're fat, you're not good enough, you're fat, you're never gonna make it. That was my story and that actually ended up happening. What happened was I ended up getting a back injury because I was doing ridiculous amounts of cardio, overworking myself, right? Trying to achieve in my job, trying to achieve at the fitness thing. And I ended up getting diagnosed with a bulging disc L5 S1. And that resulted in me being put on disability for six weeks, which resulted in me gaining 25 pounds in two months. And how interesting I just basically laid on the floor. This is when I lived in California. I laid on the floor at my aunt's house and I ate pizza and whatever because I was just so down and depressed and blah. Now I can't work out. And my whole identity had been ripped from me. 
in terms of being this person who had this, this high paying job and high performance and then being this fitness person. And now I was laying on the floor on pain meds, on all these medications, feeling like a zombie and questioning the meaning of life. But you know, that's actually when I started my health coaching business, because I realized then and there that people needed to have a balanced way of pursuing health. And so I started as what I call a fat fitness professional, which I wasn't by any means. I was very average, very normal, but compared to what my standard had been, which was cover model perfection, I was falling short. And so I recreated my own mindset, my own strategy around health, and I was able to empower other people to do the same in terms of what does health mean to me? Is it a body fat percentage? No, not usually. Is it a weight? No, not usually, but that's usually how we create that story. And I started to redefine what health meant to me over the past 10 years, seven, eight, nine, 10 years that I've been coaching in this space. So, oh, Tiffany's here. I love it. Yay. So I really want to dive in today to creating your own story. And I want to give you several different tools to create it. And one of the first things with working with me as a coach is creating awareness. And that's one of the first things that you're going to realize is, okay, now I have awareness of the patterns that have been going on subconsciously throughout my life. But most importantly, now I know how to shift and change them, right? And I also want to let you know, um, yes, um, I love it. You guys in the comments here love it on each other. It's beautiful. I also want to let you know, if you're watching this live or you're watching it in the month of October 2020, I am opening up a group coaching program for women called Conquer. It is a six-week group coaching program, and it is very high access, very high touch, which means we get on a Zoom call every single week and I coach you specifically around the direction that you want to go in. So it's very actionable. If you're that type of person who likes to be in a powerful community of women who are building and lifting each other up, who are learning from each other, who are growing, who are taking action each and every week, who are going out, doing the scary things, doing the thing that you maybe have been meaning to do all year, and you're finally committed to saying yes to yourself, to going all in for six weeks, to taking massive action, then this is going to be for you. So if this interests you, I invite you to book a call with me, a discovery call, so we can dive in a little bit more. When you enroll and register this weekend, which is October 24, 2020, you actually get VIP pricing and a private one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. Now, if you are watching this replay in the future and you're like, dang it, I missed that window of opportunity, always reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Oftentimes, I will have a spot or two available. And again, reach out to me to book a call and we can have further conversation about that. Okay, so let's dive into stories and how powerful stories are in our lives. And I want you to actually start thinking of what story have I been telling myself in 2020? Have I been latching onto the public narratives, the, the news feed, the social media feed? Who am I aligning myself with? What are they saying? And how does it make me feel? Okay. Because remember, there's no judgment here. My story is not right just because I'm here coaching and teaching doesn't mean that my version of what 2020 means to me is going to be right for you. So you have complete sovereignty and free will and creativity to step into what you are creating your story to be this year. And everyone, even though there has been similar challenges for everyone in terms of pandemic, in terms of economy, in terms of a lot of social injustice going on, everyone is going to have a different perspective and a different personal experience on 2020. So I know the slogan has been, we're all in this together, but everyone's experience is very different and everyone gets to choose what that experience means for them. So I want to give you another Tony Robbins teaching today. I find it to be very, very, uh, like concise to the point very easy to take on, very easy to communicate within. And then I'm going to give you some of my teachings and my processes that I use as well. So 
first question you're asking yourself is what story have I created about this year or about this month or about, about the remaining two months, two and a half months that we have left, right? We have November and December left in the year. What story am I creating about the possibility that remains for me in the final two months? And I'll tell you, some people have already thrown in the towel. They already threw in the towel back in April. They already just wrote it off, right? When things got extended, they're just like, whatever, screw 2020. And that's their story. And they're going to show up as the person who believes that story, which will result in uh, probably gaining some weight, probably being in sweatpants, probably uh, maybe drinking a little or eating a little bit too much, probably being afraid to take action in starting that business or in going out and trying something new. So when we're in that state of this is just how it is, it closes down our possibilities and then our world becomes very, very small. So I'm going to invite you to be with me in this process of creating from possibility. We have limitless, abundant, literally infinite potential possibilities. That's why my Facebook group is called Powerful Potential. When you tap into your potential, the field, the realm of all possibilities, you actually reconnect and remember that we have a spark of God within us, which is infinite. And when we ignore that and when we deny it and when we feel separate from it is when we start to tell a story that this is just how it is. This is just how it's always going to be. I might as well give up. I might as well just not even make progress because why? Everything I do doesn't work. And if that is your story, that will absolutely be true for you. 100%. Whatever you say is going to be your reality. So there is power in words, right? So I want you to jot down and maybe even put in the comments what your story has been on 2020 or even, even jot down what it had been tempted to be because there are a lot of different narratives out there. There are a lot of different people speaking to this and you can come in alignment with them. Uh, you can come in opposition with them or you can just choose to focus on creating your own story and not even spend the energy combating someone else's story, right? It's like having an argument with somebody on whether the glass is half full or half empty. Couldn't you both be right and couldn't you both have that perspective? And why? Why would we want to sacrifice our peace and our own alignment in order to prove to somebody that the glass is half full whenever they see it as half empty? That is their paradigm. And it is up to them to choose to change their own paradigm. Yes, we can have influence in our communities. Yes, we can have influence in our mission and we can impact in our circles. But I'm talking about trying to change others instead of focusing our energy on changing ourselves. Starting with changing our own thoughts, our own beliefs, our own energy, and then our own action so that we can live out our mission here on this planet. And if we are spending all of the time trying to prove to everybody why our mission is valid, then we're actually not fulfilling our mission. Keep your head down, stay in your lane, do your own work and your own purpose. And by being so solid on your story, your vision, your mission, your values, people will start to come alongside you because you have created a strong story. You have created a strong narrative. You have this confidence and clarity and certainty in the direction you're going. And when you can communicate that to people from an energetic place of certainty, this is my mission. This is what I'm doing. People come alongside of you because they're seeking the same thing. They're seeking certainty. So wouldn't you rather be the leader in creating that narrative versus the follower who's saying, yep, I'm going to listen to that story. I know that you're here, especially within my powerful potential group, because you are committed to changing your mindset, to changing your life and changing the world and impacting on a global scale. I know you already see the ripple effects from the work that you're doing just simply in watching this video today and applying it and implementing it. So starting off first by asking yourself what narratives you may have been tempted to believe and even maybe some narratives that you've gone down the rabbit hole of that you've kind of like. And, and what I like about this is by trying on the story, I like to think of it as trying on clothes, right? 
you're like, oh, I'm gonna put on the purple top today. And you're like, no, 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 I wanna put the red one on. And you're trying on to find out what makes you feel good. So there's no harm in looking at a story and then maybe trying it on and, and thinking, okay, what if I did believe that? What would that create in me? Well, it would create fear, insecurity, self-doubt. It would make me feel really afraid, make me feel like I'm not in control. If those are the feelings that are generated from that story, you can simply go, is this useful? And is this serving me? And in serving me, is it serving the higher good? Let me grab my dog. She's such a good educator. Aww. So asking what stories you may have been tempted, what stories you've tried on, and then what story you're choosing moving forward, right? Choosing moving forward. Okay, let me check on some of the comments. Yay, Kristen's here. Awesome. I love Tiffany. She takes notes for me. Good. I realize this is a great season to start my business. I'm calling it in. Yes, Tiffany. Kristen says the narrative that just surviving the bare minimum is the best I can do or expect. Ooh, let's rewrite that today, Kristen. Let's name it and claim it today and change that word surviving into thriving. And I'll coach you a little bit on this too, about the language that we choose to use because language is powerful. And sometimes, pull this dog over here. Sometimes, lay down, lay down. I love when you help me teach, baby. Thank you. And this is another good example. I like to use my dog in a lot of my examples. Our old story is loud, right? It's growling. It's like this dog. It's like, I don't want to go away. I've been believing that story my whole life, right? A version of that story keeps showing up. I'm just surviving. I can just barely make it because that's what my family did, because that's how I grew up, because that's the only people I know, people that live in a trailer park. And I grew up in a trailer. That's, so that's, that's truly could be my story. I grew up with people that did not have a high level of wealth consciousness. And my story became, come here, baby. My story became, I'm going to do it. And I, I owe it to my family's lineage, my ancestry, to heal all of this scarcity, to show them what is possible beyond anything that they could ever dream. And that is my mission. And it's, it's my mission here for you as well, for me to be an example of what is actually possible in terms of living your dream and not just living your dream, but making lots and lots of money from it. That is my mission because it will inspire women to be independently wealthy, to be able to give and serve at a high level and to be able to talk about money without shame and without feeling like rich people are bad. So that is my mission. Yes, to make a lot of money and to be an example and to give. So I want you to find out too, where you are in terms of your money story and what it means to have lots of money, especially those of you who have a servant's heart, who you're thinking, I need, I need to give. And when I'm giving, I should be sacrificing. Or maybe you're attached to something that feels secure. A lot of people I work with have a J-O-B and they want to do their dream. And I understand this. I went through this for five years on having the part-time gig and building the business side hustle, but always feeling like I needed that other thing until I finally manifest getting let go from my third job in a row. And God told me it's time. It is time. And you know what? I had to take the actions. I got to take the actions. And I got a job offer for $90,000 to be a medical sales rep. And I turned it down. And why is that? Because my story, my belief is that my business, me coaching and selling myself is worth more than 90K. That was just a cap that somebody put on me, but I have limitless, unlimited, expansive earning potential because of the value that I bring in the marketplace. And then I show up with certainty. I show up with that added value and I take the actions and that creates the result. Okay. So I'm sharing you a little bit of my story and I want to go into the three pieces of the story, which a lot of people, I'm glad you're on here today because we're talking about story, but a lot of people want to know the strategy first. And they're thinking, 
how do I start a business? Like, how do I attract a man? How do I attract an ideal partner? Um, how do I improve my relationship? Like, what is the A, B, C, D, E, F, G of the process? And I tell you, you can find the strategy millions of places online on the internet for free. The strategy is not the problem. The strategy is actually not the solution. Your story is what creates the result within the strategy. Who fire today. Your story is what creates the results from the strategy that you're using. Because here's another thing. There are millions of strategies that you could use and they can all work when you're 100% all in and you're bought in on the story. Because let's say you try a strategy and it doesn't work and it fails, but your story is no matter what, I'm going to succeed at this business, at this relationship, at this marriage, whatever, at my health then you're just going to realize that that was a bump in the road. You learned what didn't work. You also learned some valuable lessons and now you make a new choice and you go on to the next thing. So if your story is, I continue to move forward regardless of what comes at me, of what comes against me, of what I feel, of what I think, of who, who's trying to tell me their story. When you're so committed to your story and you have certainty that I just keep going. And I want you to think of all of the entrepreneurs out there specifically because a lot of you are wanting to become entrepreneurs or you are already they are, are thinking of inventor inventors, right? I think Thomas Edison had failed. I don't remember how many times a thousand times we'll say on creating the light bulb. I use the example of JK Rowling getting rejected, rejected, rejected on her path to becoming published author of Harry Potter. She just knew she was just certain that she was going to become a published author. That was her story. That's what she decided. Okay. Yes. All right. Tiffany says, my story has been 2020 will be a year to focus on love. Oh, beautiful. I went to Hawaii for free. Whoa. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Worked a hundred percent at home for six months, found my dream home, transformed my unhealthy work relationship with my boss. She thanks me and compliments me all the time now. Oh my gosh. And cause she doesn't, you don't chase her approval. I love it. I'm embracing and healing my shadow side and starting a business. Yes. And Tiffany, I'm so curious too, because this happens very often with myself and my clients is we don't take time to actually like assess what have I done this year? Like what have I been through? What was my journey? What have I accomplished? What have I have achieved and not just the monetary goals or the weight loss or the like, now I'm in a relationship but exactly what you've stated, which is I've been focusing on love. And this is how my, my external relationships and my internal relationships are showing up. And this is what I've created and this is what I've done. And this is how I've, I've worked through this thought process. We don't often sit down and even reflect upon what we have been doing so, so well over the past 10 months of the year. And a lot of times people get to the end of the year and like, what did I even do? Right. And they're already looking forward to next year where there is power in presence. There is power in being right here right now in recognizing and declaring what you've done well and declaring that you have everything inside you right now in order to create what it is you desire in your future. So I love that. Yes. Tiffany says, I'm with you. Your story is what creates results from the strategy you're using. Thank you. I love it. Yep. And <clears throat> Tiffany says that was my story last year about surviving, right? I am believing with you for your breakthrough. Yes. There is a power in community belief as well. When we all hold this vibration, we all hold this level of powerful belief, which is why I really do shelter myself from people who are saying a narrative that is not serving me. So I get around other entrepreneurs, other life coaches who, yes, they've seen those challenges in their business. They've seen those challenges in their life, but they have chosen to place their focus on their vision and they have chosen to stay in a high vibration of trust, of love, of gratitude for what is still going well and for what they believe that they're here to do in the world. So I keep myself within these containers, within these masterminds, within these coaching groups, which is why it is so important to have a community, a coaching community. This right here inside of the, the Powerful Potential Facebook group is free. You can be here at any time, but I also highly encourage you to go through an actual group coaching process whether that's with me or someone else being inside the conquer container or having me as your one-on-one -on -one coach or someone else to actually take you through that process of 
creating your story in reality. Okay. So we talked about strategy. This is the three step process I'm giving you uh, that is taught by Tony Robbins. Strategy is usually the thing that people think is the most important. The other thing we're talking about is story. Okay. So that's number two of the story. Story is actually the most important and it goes into your belief and it goes into what you're claiming, what you're saying. And I'm going to tell you how to actually create that. So for example, what I do anytime, most mornings, we'll put it that way, most mornings, because I don't want to give you the perception that I am perfect with my morning routine. I do a lot of things in the morning, meditation, EFT tapping, journaling, uh, working out, listening to audio affirmations, doing all the things. However, what I have been very adamant about for the past few weeks is this process of declaring what is coming forth in my day that day. So what I do is I do a journaling process where I just declare and I write out how my day is going to go as if it has already happened. So we don't want to say something like, I'm so excited because I will do this or this is coming to me. You want to actually state it in the present tense. So before I go live on video, I state exactly what my energy is, how great it feels. I act as if the video has already been done. I already talk about the impact that it has made. I talk about the results that it has created in your life and in my life. I talk about how great I feel in having completed it. And I already step into the completion of it. So I encourage you as you're creating your story, you can do this broadly in terms of you know, thinking about a year from now, six months from now, two months from now, remember time is an illusion. We place our own perceived limitations upon what we can or cannot do in a certain amount of time. So you may think it's going to take a year to double your business. Whenever, when you are energetically aligned, when you practice your belief, when you take aligned actions, you can quantum leap in one month, in three months. You can quantum leap in less time than you have ever imagined. And you can start to add to your story by finding evidence of others who have done the same. Now, I do want to say a little caveat here because as recovering perfectionists, we have a tendency to compare and then set the bar really high and then kick ourselves if we don't achieve it. But this is actually also part of the story, right? Let's say you have a goal to make $100,000 in your business or whatever. We'll just use that as a goal. And let's say, okay, that I can't even think that breaks down to about 12K a month. And you don't make 12K that month. In fact, you make 1K or you make 5K, whatever it is. Your story is, I am still okay and I'm still on my way to 100K. And I am so grateful for every single piece of money that comes into my business, of monetary exchange that comes into my business. Because the gratitude and the abundance mindset is the way that you get to 100K instead of always looking at how you're not there yet and always looking at how somebody else did it quicker than you. Use the other person's story as an example of what's possible and allow that your story may look different. It may happen quicker. It may happen later. But ultimately, your story is I am on my way and I envision and imagine and already know and believe this is what it feels like when it happens and step into the moment of it already have happened and show up in that energy. How would you actually operate in your day to day? How would you carry yourself? How would you speak? How would you communicate? How would you tip people? If you are already making 12 K per month, if you were already creating that business and stepping up as a leader in the community, if you were already in that loving relationship that you desire to be in? How would you treat yourself and treat yourself that way now? How would you show up and show up that way now? You're not waiting for the thing to show up in your reality to start acting as if, okay? And I'm also not saying to go out and you're like, well, if I was making 100K, I would buy a new car, okay? So some of these things will set you back detrimentally if you actually are taking actions before the reality is there. But I want you to think about, okay, if I had a new car, how, what would it look like on the inside? And does your current car reflect the cleanliness? Does it smell good? Do you take care of it? Do you wash it? Do you get it regularly checked up and maintenanced? Because that's what you would do if you had the new car. 
Okay. I'm hoping this is making sense with you. Yes. All right. Yep. Tiffany's putting notes in here. Strategy is not most important. Story is most important. Yes. But we're going to get into the third component, which is arguably the, the most, most important. Okay. Because we can all sell ourselves a story that we don't believe in. And I know you've done this, right? Oh, hey, Lucy's here. I know you've done this where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that I can do anything. You know, when I was a kid, they said you can be whatever you want and you just kind of give it lip service, but you don't embody it. You don't fully believe that that is your truth. You believe that that's okay for other people. You may have seen other people do it, but you don't believe that you personally right now in this lifetime with your circumstances can allow that to happen. And you notice I say, make it happen is not what I said. I said, allow, because the reality is already there. When you start to learn about quantum physics, every single reality, and I don't know if you saw the movie Men in Black, one of them, one, two, or three, probably the second or third one, where one of the alien guys could, he could see every potential possibility and reality all at once. And it was constantly always changing based on the actions and based on the things that were happening in the current reality. But what if that was actually the case and your every thought action reality was creating your new reality, your future reality. And that is actually what quantum physics says. So that movie, although it's funny, is stating an actual scientific fact about the quantum realm, about how there's all of these different, these different possibilities coexisting all at once. And you can latch on to the negative possibility and you can allow that to come in, or you can latch on to the abundant, prosperous, super giving, amazing, highest good for all possibility and move in the direction of that. So the final piece, which is underneath your story is your state. I like to think of this, Tony calls it state. I think of this as energy. I think of this, have you aligned yourself with the energy of the story, with the feeling, with the emotion? When you're writing out your story, your new story that you're claiming, do you feel it as if it has already happened? Are you walking across the stage graduating with that degree? Are you signing a check or you're depositing the check with the money? Are you in your new car and you can smell it? Are you building that school in Africa? and imagining what it would be like to be there with all the children. The energy behind the belief, behind the story, is what creates the power within it. And the reason why, why Tony uses state is because it's really, I really like the word state because you can control your state. Like even right now, all of you are in a passive learning state, which is you're sitting down, you're listening. A lot of you are engaging, which is good. That's more of an active learning, but we are taught to be passive. We are taught to sit down, shut up, listen to the story that's being told. Don't ask questions, right? Raise your hand, ask, ask for permission, but I'm giving you all permission right now that you can create your own story. You can create your own energetic state without anyone's permission. You have the complete sovereignty, free will, empoweredness within you to create that right now. So when thinking about state, here are some things you can do. Emotion creates motion, actually physically moving your body, even just this. This is a power move that I created in doing Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power Within, which I go, yes, yes, yes. And I pump my chest and I move my chest forward because that is expansive. And I use my voice because it's vibration. And I say yes to the day, yes to opportunities. And will you feel like a freakazoid? Yes, absolutely. I tell you this all the time when you first start doing the work and you start doing something differently, you're creating new neural networks. You're creating new neural pathways. You're creating a new state of being. And when you create a new state of being, you get to have the things that you desire because your current wavelength, your current state of being cannot hold that container of all the love that you want, of all the money that you desire, of all the contribution that you're willing to give. But when you create a new state of being, which goes through actual motion, emotion, changing your state and stepping into something that feels weird and different, right? It's like if you already, if you automatically became CEO tomorrow, 
your outward appearance that what you would wear would be different. You put that power suit on, right? You probably do your hair different. You might pull a more eye makeup on. You might put the cat eye on. Just stepping into that power. So knowing that, yes, you can take a quantum leap from being the underling, being the worker, right into being CEO, but your state of being must change. So that goes with what energy state are you spending most of your day in? It goes back to yesterday's masterclass, which was about the vibrational scale of emotions. Are you spending most of your day in doubt, fear, anxiety? I don't know if I can do it. Self-worth. Or are you choosing to step into courage, willingness, abundance, taking action on your vision every single day? Here's the thing. It is okay that you are in those lower vibrational states. I don't want to make it seem like one is better than the other. The reality is life is 50 50. You will have ups and downs. All of it is okay. All of it is purposeful. All of it is part of being a human in this lifetime. However, you will notice your state of being when you have all the desires, when you are filled with gratitude, when you already notice all of the abundance in your life right now, your state of being attracts more of that, more gratitude for more physical things, for more abundance, for more beautiful, loving relationships. But it starts with your own energy. It starts with you practicing love without anybody there to love you back. That's how it happens. It starts with practicing, imagining what you stepping on stage feels like before it happens. Imagining receiving that big check coming in the mail or digitally getting auto-drafted in your account. Sitting and feeling and imagining your actual story as if you're in it in the moment and already having gratitude for it, right? They say praise is one of the most highest vibrations, right? You're saying, thank you, God. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know it's already coming. I know it's, I can feel it. It's already here and I'm aligning with it and I'm allowing it. That is the third piece. So how can you change your state? Whether you need to get up and jump and dance. I've been doing a lot of dance lately and it's so interesting because people have been loving it but it's not for you. It's for me. It's for me because I realize when I get stuck in that stagnant energy, maybe I'm sitting at the computer for a while. Maybe I'm looking at my dreams and visions and going, oh my gosh, that's so big. It feels like it's going to take so long. And I get up and I dance it off and I affirm, this is what I believe. This is my story. This is my state. And I reaffirm it. So also know that you can write your story once, but you must revisit it daily and revisit it energetically. Yes, this is my belief and put it in state, stand in your power pose, dance, run, move, work out, whatever it is that creates that state for you. And it could be yoga, it could be stretching, it could be just putting your hands up to the sky, right? I grew up in a Christian community that was Pentecostal, that was very um, <laughs> flamboyant is the only word I can think of in terms of praising and worshiping. And I felt weird when I was a kid, just like, this is weird, what are they doing? But as I have evolved in my spiritual practice, I love raising my hands. I love saying yes, because I'm receiving and I'm praising and I'm feeling grateful and I'm using my body in that moment because I'm really embracing it. I'm really feeling it. And I don't care what other people think because that is also part of my story. My story is independent of what anyone else thinks of me. I'm not here to impress anyone. I am here to be fully expressed as myself. And that means I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I'm a woo-woo person over here doing these crystals. And that is okay. That is who I am. Because when I try to fit into a mold or a box, and the same with you guys, if you're trying to fit into the mold and the box of what you think has been created for you, you cannot fulfill your purpose. And you're not fully aligned with your vision because you're not being yourself. And when that happens, there is a filter over your vision and your mission. So when you're trying to communicate to others, you're trying to communicate it in a way that they will receive it and say, oh, I want you to be aligned with my mission. Whenever, the best thing you can do is be so fully aligned with your story, your vision, where you're going, what you desire, so fully aligned and certain of what it is that when you show up and communicate it, it is just spoken as pure truth from your heart into the heart and soul of others and they get to decide if it aligns or not. And the beautiful thing about this is, is when you're in full alignment with your story energetically on every vibrational level, when you show up, the people 
that are for you, that are going to come alongside you and support you or partner with you or be your client or be your student. They're going to just say, hell yes, within their spirit. It's going to be unquestionable. And you're not even going to know and understand how people are attracted to you, but it's because you're living in full alignment with who you really are. But when you try to water down your message to, to serve the people at their current level and what their mindset is like and what their financial abundance blueprint is and what, what their family of origin is, and you try to change and mold your message to them, to fit them, it waters it down. It waters it down. So what you'll start to notice is you're going to notice when you are uplifted and you are in a community that believes as you believe, that believes in their own vision and their own story. You may not be in alignment with exactly where you're going, but because you're holding the same belief and the same energy of your vision, you are able to collaborate. You are able to hold space with each other because you are both there vibrationally. So although you may not be in partners in business or partners in life, you are supporting each other energetically as you move into that next version of yourself. That's why I love this container. And that's why within this Facebook group, I have created it so that people are invited by other people. People are drawn to it. And I am not of the mind that I need to grow it quickly or fast or to just invite people in. I am here calling in my ideal people who want to work with me, maybe now, maybe in the future but who want to ultimately be on this level of service and co-creation with everyone within this space. And that comes first from me being me. So I'm in here talking about woo-woo, energy, science. I'm in here talking about quantum physics. I'm in here talking about Christianity because this is all a part of who I am. This is all a part of my fullest expression. And if I water that down for you or anyone, it is going to water down my actual purpose on this planet. So I am committed here in this space to show up real and truly aligned with what my mission is, which is to help you, support you to transform your mindset because I know it will transform your life. And I do that through all of the modalities that I've learned and that I'm learning. So I hope that by me showing up here in full alignment with what my mission is, my belief, my story, that I can invite you to step into your story and creating that passionately on a high vibration and continuing to pour that belief in and continuing to allow the days when you have doubt and to continue to step away from self-judgment when you're like, dang, it's not happening fast enough or I'm feeling low today and just allow. The, the beauty of allowing is it's okay because even millionaires have down days. They don't just become superhuman because they are millionaires. They have learned how to process their emotions. They have learned how to allow it. And this is not true for everyone either, right? Because we see a lot of wealthy people who are having a lot of mental problems because they put all of their worth and value in the monetary. Whereas we here are holistic in terms of our success and in terms of what we're pursuing. We want health, wealth, and love, fulfillment, contribution. We want all of it. And it is okay. And you have permission to allow it all. You get to have it all, despite what you've been told. Okay. I'm going to check in on the comments. Um, yes. Goosebumps. Christy's getting goosebumps. I love it. And I'm telling you, this masterclass delivery I was talking to my coach about it. I was like, this three-part masterclass series that I've done this week is like my, my fullest expression of who I am. It's, it's the most energetically aligned of any work that I've done this year. And I actually say that almost with everything that I do because I'm quantum leaping every day. I wake up in a new energy every day and I'm like, oh my gosh, this and that. And it is evidence of the energy and the belief and the certainty that's within me and so this masterclass is fire. It is, it is fire. So I invite you, if you're watching this one or you've watched the other ones, share them with people who need to hear this message and invite people into this community because this is power. This is phenomenal. This is how people change and grow. And oh, Christine says, lip service isn't going to help us. Correct, correct. And then Tiffany says, state, create your own energetic state, latch onto the abundant possibility and move in the direction of it. 
sometimes when I say things, I'm like, where is that coming from? I'm channeling this from the heavens. What energy state are you spending most of your day in? Great question to ask. Yep. Tiffany says, I've definitely spent most of my time in lower vibrational state. It's been safe and comfortable there, but I'm ready to pivot. I have my positive moments, but want to be more consistent in my high energy. Yes, this is so common. And there are two things about this. Number one is our brain is designed to put us in a fear state. Why is that? Because our brain is designed to keep us alive. So evolutionarily, right, from back in the day when we had to run from lions, tigers, and bears, we created this really strong fear response that would keep us away from danger. And we would run and we would survive. And then we would pass on our genetics to our children, which created more fearful children, right? Because that's what kept us alive. So honoring that, honoring the process of natural selection, right? Of basically what happened was those really, uh, those really bold people who maybe didn't have as much fear, who went out into the world to face the lion, got killed by the lion. So they died and they didn't have children. So they didn't pass their genetics on, right? So the process of just honoring natural selection in that way, and I love biology. I, I took evolutionary biology in college and I love just understanding how the brain has evolved to serve us. So instead of going, dang it, you stupid fear, why are you always showing up here? Apparently I would rhyme in that case. Um, instead of looking at it like that, just looking at it like, wow, this is really cool that this has evolved to keep me safe and it's been beneficial. However, our physical actual life has changed a lot, right? We're no longer outside or living in caves or living in huts and being fearful of the lions and tigers and the predators. Now we're triggered by a Facebook post and that causes the fear and anxiety and the desire to defend ourselves and be right. And it, and it creates this stress response and it creates this feeling in our body that we don't know what to do with because it's flight, fight, or fear. That's what the fear response is, flight or flight. Well, we can't run, right? We can just keep looking at our devices. So we must evolve new ways to move through the fear, the stress, the anxiety when it comes up because it's not here to serve us in the way that it was before, right? It's not, it's not helping us to get away from danger, what it's doing is keeping us small. What it's doing us doing is keeping us in a state of fear so that we don't take action. So this is another good time to assess what influences out there are stabbing a hole in your story. And who do you need to unfollow? And who do you need to unfriend? And who do you need to set boundaries around what you're sharing with them? And a lot of times this is family and close friends. Who is stabbing holes in your story and sowing seeds of disbelief in what you believe for your life? Because this is your baby. This is what you're creating into this world. And you wouldn't just throw your baby to the wolves who are going to tear it apart. So you need to be very conscious of who you're sharing your story with. You can share it here inside this Facebook group. We will all day cheer and we will be like, yes, bigger, better, you got this. But know that you can't expect your story to survive whenever somebody is stabbing it, right? So don't allow those people in your life to stab holes in your story. And if that sometimes means keeping it to yourself, you have this community that you can share it within, but there are certain people that are close to me that I don't share my full expression to because I know they're not ready. They're not energetically at that level where they can receive that. And just because their consciousness is at a state of fear and maybe it's at a state of practicality and maybe it's at a state of logic, which I do respect because I do need, sometimes I do need that grounded perspective. But if it's coming from too much of a place of fear and logic and strategy, then I know I'm not ready to share it with them. They're not ready to receive it from me. So notice that as well as you create your story. That even if it's your closest loved one, they just might not be at the energy and vibration to receive that story. But what the amazing thing about that is, you don't need to be in the energy of the I told you so. I like to think of the energy of giving to that person from the abundant place that I knew I was going to be at. And I wrote them into my vision and I imagined us going on vacation and I imagined me being able to buy them this thing and have them be so excited. I didn't have to tell them about that because my belief is enough to make it happen. They don't need to be on board with it. So I want you, especially those of you who have spouses and you're running a business, this is really important. A lot of times 
we have an entrepreneurial energy in the mix and we have a more grounded energy in the mix. And so if you are in a relationship with someone or you have a, a, a parent or a cousin or a close friend, usually there's going to be a juxtaposition of energies. And you are that energy of someone who believes and inspires and moves forward. And those around you are going to be in those lower, not lower. I don't want to say lower energies. I want to say grounded energy and grounded energy is beautiful because those are the people that can actually help you implement your strategy. So if you're looking for grounded people, they can help you do the A, B, C, D, E, F, G strategy while you're creating the vision, you're continuing to move forward in what you believe is coming. Okay. So I don't want to downplay those people, but I do want to say they have a place in your vision, but it's typically not in the spark, right? You're not sharing the spark with those grounded people yet because they're going to go, well, what if, and what if, and what if, and that's important when you get to the implementation stage where they're saying, well, this is what we need to do. And we need a, we need a space and we need a website and we need these things. It's important, but your belief has to be built before you go sharing your spark and your story with everyone. Okay. So I'm going to read some comments and then I'm going to wrap this up because I'm firing myself up right now. Yes. I love it, Christine. Thank you. Christine says, if you are seeing this and have not signed up to work with Cami, I would suggest you do so. I love it. Thank you, Christine. Um, let me see here. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. I lost my place. <clears throat> okay. I lost it. Okay. And she says she is the best. Thank you. I will receive that. I am the best. I am the best at what I do. I have this energetic ability to get through to your inner soul and teach you the practical and the energetic and have you start transforming. It's freaking amazing. It's amazing. And I've stepped into allowing that for myself. Whereas before, listen, I was in jobs for a long time and I kept having this story that people weren't recognizing me for my value and my worth. But guess what? I wasn't recognizing myself for my own value and my own worth. And that my friends was the only thing holding me back from being successful in my own business. Okay. It was my own value, my own worth and owning it and showing up and saying, I am the best. Nobody does it like me. And it's not conceited and it is not cocky it is just my truth. And that aligns with somebody at a soul level. And they say, heck yes. I want to step into that for myself. That's how this transmission works. That's how this transmutation works. And these are fancy words that you may not know or understand right now, but just trust that this is the energetic work that I do. And if you're working with me, this is working for you. I actually do a meditation that energetically, I connect with all of my clients, past, present, and future. And this sounds super woo woo, but I invite you to receive it today. And there is this healing flame that is a purple flame that I envision, that I visualize. And it goes along with the energy of this transformational dragon energy, okay? Which is transmutation energy. And I do this in my meditation where I'm connecting energetically with you all. And even if you're watching live right now or you're watching the replay several months from now, know that that's the energy that drew you in. That is the energy that drew you in because this is what I do in the internal, in the spiritual work. And this transmutation energy is transmuting your fear, is transmuting these lower energy vibrations and allowing you to step forward and say yes to yourself. It may not be right now. It may be right now. It may be tomorrow, maybe next week. But I trust and believe that the energetic work that I do in my meditation practice, in my spiritual practice for my clients, for you right now, or just if you're in my field, you don't necessarily have to be a client yet to experience this energy. My belief is that this energy touches you from the content that I put out, the words that I speak, the images, especially when I'm on video. There is this energy, this purple flame, this violet flame of transmutation that assists you in your own process Oh, interesting. Um, my device just started playing music. Um, that assists you in your process of transforming from where you are now into where you want to be. 
So I also want to let you know that you are energetically supported. Absolutely. Tiffany says, be conscious of your story, share carefully and selectively, but powerfully or and powerfully share carefully, selectively and powerfully because you want to be able to embody that story with the energies that will receive it. And Krista says, yes, as someone who always feels like I need external validation, great reminder. Yes. Tiffany says, yes, me too. I've rated codependently most of my life. Yeah. And remember what your labels are, are going to create your reality. So anybody that I work with who is a former codependent, we talk about it in that way. In the past, I've displayed codependent behaviors. That's all it is. It is a behavior. It is a pattern. This is the second thing. I told you earlier that there's two reasons why we want to feel bad. Like our body wants to feel bad and fearful. Number one is because of our brain evolved that way. But number two is because we become chemically addicted to that feeling. It's just, I don't want to say it's just like, but it's similar to when an alcoholic becomes physically dependent on those chemicals within their body, we become physically dependent upon feeling like crap. And it feels like home. And that's why it feels comfortable. And that's why it feels safe. Even though it feels crappy, we're getting something from it and we're getting that familiarity. And if you haven't watched Masterclass One, that goes back to your feeling of certainty, which is I'm certain I'm gonna continue to feel okay or blah. And that's okay with me because I want certainty. And when I take a step out, that leads me into uncertainty and variety. So if your top human need is operating at certainty, then you're wanting to stay in this state of, this is how I always feel. And it's weird for me to feel differently. And I, if I'm happy, I start to think what's going to happen next and something bad's going to happen. And it's simply a pattern. Christine says, music playing means it's time to dance. Yes, actually. And it's funny because I'm wearing my, my vibrational, my frequency device and it, it ran for 50 minutes because I wanted to run it while I was doing this. So it was just telling me that it was done and I had reached my highest frequency, which I fully believe I have. So your homework here is to ask what your story has been and now recreate your new story with feeling, with emotion, create it with an anchor. So just like Christine said, dance, put on a song that makes you feel like you're most abundant, that makes you feel like this is what it feels like when I'm in the energy of living my dream, when I'm in the energy of being at the job or the business that I, that I desire the most, when I'm in that amazing relationship, move the way you would move, feel the way you would feel and put that as an anchor. You can also do it as a movement. Like I talked about the thing that I do. Yes, yes, yes. Changing your state. You can also record your own affirmation. You can, you can get an affirmation from me. Listen to that affirmation every morning when you walk, when you're moving or when you're working out or when you're going through your yoga or you're stretching so that you're actually embedding that story within your physiology, within your body, within your cells. And that's just who you show up as now. That's just who you are. That's just what you believe now. So rewriting your story, putting it with an anchor of some type of movement or physiology and getting in the energy of that abundance, of that creation, of that receiving. Yes. Tiffany says, yes, I was ready. I love it. All right, everyone here um, and future, future people. I like talking to people in the future because what's so freaking cool is a lot of times these videos will incubate. They are incubating right now. This is incubating for somebody to listen to in the future, but it will be their present moment and they need to hear this message in their present moment to change their story, to gain that certainty of where they desire to go and to ultimately say yes to their gut response when they're watching this of saying, yes, I want more. I want to do more. I want to move forward. And if that is you in this moment now or future now, always the now, reach out to me directly. Let's hop on a free discovery call. Go to camikennedy.com forward slash call and we'll find out where it is you're going, where your clarity is. We'll create more clarity and ultimately we'll find out what is holding you back, what is blocking you from taking you to your next level. This is the work that I was born to do. I am so grateful for you guys watching here live. Christine, I love that gift. Yes. Um, old Napoleon Dynamite. I'm so grateful for those of you tuning in live today. 
And I'm grateful for anybody who's watching the whole way till the end and actually implementing this. And I look forward to connecting with you. I look forward to hearing from you on how this landed. And ultimately, I look forward to being a piece, a part of your vision, of your spark. That's ultimately going to change the world. It's going to change lives of you and people close to you and people around you and the, the massive ripple effect. By doing this work, we change the world. This is how the world gets changed. By doing the internal work and then showing up in alignment with your vision and allowing that to be of service to the rest of humanity, to the planet, to animals. Whatever your vision is, we are all here for a purpose. So I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. And you will get these bonuses sent out to you via email when you register with the link. All right, bye.